Okay, so I'm streaming here, and what I'm going to do, assuming this is working, is, um, I don't know if the live stream's going to work or not. It looks like it's probably not going to, uh, because it seems to be slow, internet connection issues and all of that. But uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show... Uh, how a flight is dispatched in Flight Simulator X uh, for Professional Flight Planner X, as you can see, is the product I have here. Uh, what I've actually got open now is the um, Advanced Flight Planning tab, so I don't want to do that actually right now. Um, I'll do that in a minute. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the left tab here and click Schedule. So this is all the schedule of all the flights that I have that I've dispatched. Um, I have a schedule. The last flight I dispatched and flew was um, from Oslo, Norway to uh, Las Palmas, Gran Canaria Airport. And uh, I did that in the Captain Sim Boeing 757-200. And today's flight, uh, I will be doing, um, I've coded it as United 901. I don't think that's the right flight number, but that's the number I've assigned it. And it's going to be from Las Palmas in the Canary Islands to San Francisco uh, in Northern California. And it's already given me a figure for the passengers, 110 passengers, uh, 15,029 pounds of cargo, and the default registration, which is just a default PMDG 777-200LR registration, which is November 772LR, strangely enough, or Lima Romeo. Uh, and the type, of course, is uh, Bravo 777 Lima. And the scheduled time of departure, which uh, is coming up here in an hour or so, so I'm going to have to hurry, uh, is 840 Zulu, it is now 726 Zulu, and the scheduled time of arrival is 2050 Zulu. And um, so that's the details of the flight that I'll be dispatching, and I'll be trying to record video of different segments of the flight, and we'll see if this works. I get the feeling that due to my internet connection, the live stream is not going to work so well, but uh, the... Uh, recording of the video might. So, in any case, uh, what I'm going to be doing here is uh, I'll be taking you through the flight pr planning process. Uh, what I'm looking at, unfortunately, it doesn't look like the map for uh, Flight Planner X is going to show here, so that's going to be a little bit difficult. I might uh, use Sky Vector for the flight planning, because uh, particularly for this flight, um, it's going to be random tracking. Um, I'm looking at the Great Circle route now, and I wish I wish you could see it, but you can't. So, um, But basically, as I'm looking at it here, I'm looking at the Great Circle route. Um, it's going to be random tracking... Uh, heading northwest across the Atlantic, um, starting out in uh, the Canaries airspace, which makes sense. Uh, Santa Maria control for the oceanic area. Uh, crossing into Kennedy Oceanic. And I believe, what is that? Gander, crossing into Gander. Um, and then Moncton, uh, which is the area where, what was that, uh, Swiss Air 111 went down, Moncton Center airspace, uh, Nova Scotia area, um, up over into Canada, uh, and that would just take you into Mon Montreal Center, Toronto, Minneapolis Center, uh, Denver Center, Seattle Center and uh, Oakland Center to finish off. So that's the Great Circle route. Um, so unfortunately, you can't see the map. Um, what I can do here is I can try opening Sky Vector and see if that uh, will show on here. And I can do the same thing and kind of point out the Great Circle route. And we can see Sky Vector now. Okay, so I have Sky Vector up. And uh, so here's Professional Flight Planner X, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going into the flight planning screen, and I don't think you'll be able to see it, but uh, I'm going to right-click on here and hit Plan, and that's going to take me into the respective plan view, and I'm not sure how well you can read this. Um, but it gives me the general flight information of the airlines, United, so that's UAL. And um, let's see, the flight number is 901, and again, I don't know if that's a realistic flight number or not, but uh, that's the number I'm using. I just randomly picked it. And the airport, uh, I guess you can't see the weather pop up, but the airport port is Gulf Charlie Lima Papa uh, and that's Grand Canaria in the Canary Islands and we're going to KSFO uh, that's Kilo San Francisco or excuse, excuse me Kilo Sierra Foxtrot Oscar uh, so that's San Francisco International and take off uh, based on the weather uh, right now that it's loaded um, which may change later is uh, runway 30 right Landing runway, landing 28 right, and I'm going to select 28 left because that's just the runway I prefer in San Francisco. I know it well. Uh, and I'm going to choose my taxi time here. I'm going to choose uh, 20 minutes for the taxi out and 15 minutes for the taxi in. Uh, generally takes me a while to taxi out and taxi in. Um, I'll, you'll see that or I'll explain that later on uh, why it takes me a while and all that good stuff. So, uh, I've set 20 minutes for the taxi out time, and I've set 15 minutes for the taxi in time, and uh, commercial flight number is going to be United 901. Uh, it's an international flight. It's a scheduled operation. Date of flight is going to be June 23rd, 2014, which is today. Um... And obviously, as I'm recording this, 7.33 UTC, so uh, we've got like an hour and ten minutes till flight time. Hopefully, I'll make it, uh, but we'll see. Because uh, the scheduled, as you can see here, scheduled UTC time of departure is 8.40 Zulu. Um, estimated time of departure, well, we don't know that yet. Uh, may end up filling that out later. And the scheduled time of arrival is 20.50 Zulu, so that's an estimated en route time of 12 hours, 10 minutes. And that'll, again, uh, be as you're going to see here in this next section, um, in the 777-200 LR from PMDG. And I'll be recording, uh, maybe not the entire flight, but segments of that flight as well. So, uh, there we have the registration, as I discussed earlier, November 777-2 Lima Romeo. Uh, and it's a type, the type is, uh, Bravo 777-2 to Lima Romeo with uh, GE engines. Configuration is standard. Um, other options I could go with is manually, manual, but I'm not going to do that. Um, weight adjustment, I'm not going to do that. Empty weight is set at, uh, and then I use pounds, by the way, because I'm from the United States. I know it's, you know, not metric, and I probably should be using metric, but I use pounds, so there you go. Uh, empty weight is going to be 34. 3,400, uh, excuse me, 344,244 pounds. Max takeoff weight is 766,000 pounds. And max landing weight is 492,000 pounds. Um, and then we have the climb um, profile here. 250 knots uh, below 10. Uh, 310 knots on the climb out of above 10 and 0.84 Mach, uh, obviously, as you get over 26, 27,000 feet. Uh, cost index it has selected here is going to be 85. Um, I'm actually going to lower that to 40 and see if that works. Um, Try and see if I can save some virtual gas. And there we go, cost index of 40. And then descent profile, uh, 0.84 Mach, 320 knots, and then 250 knots below 10. Initial cruise altitude is going to be optimized. Step climb is going to be in increments of 2,000 feet. 
Uh, service ceiling, flight level three, excuse me, flight level four three one, so that's forty three thousand one hundred feet. Um, and it's the sa- uh, same as the service ceiling. Service ceiling is uh, flight level four three one, so forty three thousand one hundred feet. And the altitude capping, the most, the highest stick and tell me to step climb to is forty three thousand one hundred feet. Uh, so now I'm going to look at the payload here. And I can see um, that the payload it's given me, it gives me a random payload here. Uh, I have 109 adults, uh, one child, three infants, uh, max passengers. It has for this configuration is 234, so half full. Um, not even that, um, but I'll go with that because I'm not using FS passengers, so I'm not all that concerned about making money. Um, and the lower the weight, the higher I'll be able to cruise, so... Uh, I'll take that. Uh, baggage, 3,190 pounds. Cargo, 15,029 pounds, which gives me a payload of uh, 38,461 pounds. And if I wanted to do max payload, I could. Um, so that gives me all the weight calculations. That gives me the payload and the zero fuel weight, which in this case uh, is going to be 3... 81.7 or 38 381,712 pounds uh, there's a reason uh, we put a decimal after the first two numbers because it gets really hard to say uh, max zero fuel weight is 461,000 pounds so we're fine on zero fuel weight um, and I'm going to leave the fuel until after the route is done and the route planning that's where things get a little bit complicated so um, instead of going find here, I'm going to go into the advanced find menu, and if I click on this, and to go to the sub menu, which you probably can't see, I'm going to hit advanced, and hopefully you can see, um, apparently you cannot see this tab, so I will attempt to describe it. Uh, it's giving me route finder options, it gives me the mini map with the great circle route, and uh, we're going, obviously, from Golf, Charlie, Lima, Papa. And we're going to um, KSFO, which is obviously uh, uh, San Francisco, Kilo, Sierra, Foxtrot, Oscar. And um, I'm going to let it do an auto route first. Um, I want to use upper airspace and red rather than auto. Um, and in this particular case, um, I'm going to view the Nat Tracks, um, which again, unfortunately, you can't see. Um, and we're westbound today. So I'm going to view the Nat Tracks and see if there's any Nat Tracks that'll help me out. And there's really not. Um, there's Nat Track U, but that comes from South Africa, U, Sierra, and Tango, but all of those come from South Africa, so that's not going to help me much. And F is going from Shannon, basically, to uh, Gander, and everything else is north of that. So, unfortunately, you can't see the map. I wish you could, but you can't. So, the tracks aren't going to help me out. So, uh, I'm going to take off the track filter. And I'm going to show direct routes here. That's going to be quite a complicated display. Um, so I'll let it try and figure things out for me here. So I'm going to hit ignore tracks because uh, tracks aren't going to help us today. We're going to have to do uh, random routing. And um, we've got the aircraft in there selected, 777-200LR. I really wish you could see this. This annoys me. i got to figure out if there's a way to make it so you can see this. Uh, it has cruise altitude selected, optimum cruise altitude, flight level 360. I'm not sure if that's where we're going to end up or not. And it has the scheduled time of departure at one hour from now in 840 Zulu. And uh, at, at the moment, I um, think I'm going to make that, so that's fine. Um, and I have cruise altitude flight level restrictions checked, wind optimized routes checked, and uh, we don't uh, we don't need to avoid airways, waypoints, 
or nav aids. Uh, we just want to let it run the route and see what it comes up with here. So um, I'll go ahead and hit find and give it a moment to find a route here. And it takes a moment. Um, I've got to say, I this is a pretty impressive product. Uh, but it still doesn't quite give me what I want as far as root finders go. Um, probably like many of you, or maybe not many of you, but um, uh, probably like some of you, I suppose. Um, I watched the Just Planes video, uh, of the polar operations for Air Canada's 777-200LR, and they showed uh, Lido and how Lido works, or Lido, however you want to pronounce it. Um, as the professional flight planning dispatch software that they actually use, or some companies use, in the real world. And um, I want that. Um, but because it's FSX and it's a simulator, and I got close to getting my dispatch license but didn't quite make it, um, for various reasons, mainly Occupy Seattle, um, I'm stuck with Professional Flight Planner X, so... This is as good as it gets. Um, so the root finder is okay. It's not great. Um, and I need to kind of dig in the forms to figure out ways to optimize it. So at any rate, um, I have my root now. And I'm going to see if I can export it to... Um, you can export it to various aircraft... And I'm going to see if I can export it to, I should be able to export it to uh, Sky Vector. Somewhere there is. But at any rate, you can see the route here now. Um, and I can see the route, the map, route map, it's taking me away south of the optimum route. Uh, distance increase is 3%. So um, that's probably going to be okay, but I will take a look at it here just to kind of get a feel for things. And of course, I have to do ETOPS as well, so that may end up changing the route. Um, and again, I can't really show you that, which sucks. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so we're missing the Latin longs in this particular picture of the route, but provided it loads here, there we go. You can see the basics of it, so Gran Canaria is off there, off the south coast of Africa, going across the Atlantic the long way, uh, which means that I need to pay particular attention to ETOPS rules. Uh, and then once across the, the Atlantic, uh, JFK, uh, up over Chicago, and coming down over Iowa City, as I just mentioned, and then, um, let's zoom in here. So I can actually see. And I still can't see. Okay, so Iowa City. Coming down over. Uh, passing by Des Moines. Uh, Wolbach. Um, there we have a Sigmat. So, light, moderate, convective activity. Well, that's not something that you want. Um, so let me look at the Sigmat here. Convective Sigmat. Valid until 8.55 Zulu. Um, so that's going to be... Um, valid Outlook from... That's going to be well past the time that I'm going to be going through there, it looks like. Tops to flight level 430. Um, well, that doesn't look like something I want to mess with at all. So I'm going to have to find a way to route around that, it looks like. So um, I'm going to go back to... Uh, professional Dispatcher X here, and find the point in the route where that's going to be a problem. And it looks like it's um, going to be into the latter part of the route. So let's go back to Sky Vector here. 
and open the window so I can see it. Okay, so we got convective sigmats to the south. Well, I'm assuming convective sigmats because it's, you know, summer in the United States, and that's generally what you end up with. And coming across over the Atlantic, no significant weather marked that I can see anyway. So the Atlantic crossing... Um, assuming I'm, I'm following rules, which I think I am, but I'm not sure. Uh, but the Atlantic Crossing part should be fine. It's after Iowa City that we're going to have... Maybe want to think about a different sector here. Because we got sigmats there, there, and it's just a pretty minor sigmat. So, um, my instinct here... Looking at my waypoints as soon as it'll load. Um, the start of the star is the waypoint MVA, and that'll lead to the lock one. Now, I'm going to go into the root editor here and switch it. So you can see it. Um, okay, you're not going to actually be able to see the root editor. This is such a bummer. Um, so I'll, I'm already well south of my great circle route, um, and that's something to consider here. Um, so I'm going to change my arrival to uh, the Modesto 4. Uh, just because I know that one, and I want to make it a little bit easier. It's going to be the same transition. It's going to be MVA transitioning into the standard terminal arrival procedure. So, um, the part of the route we need to change is from OBH to MVA. So, knowing that, I can go back to Sky Vector and figure out what to do for that particular part of the route. And, like I said, I really hope this isn't boring. I'm trying not to make it boring. But you never know. Um, I just, I don't know. And I hope I can edit this together later and make it somewhat interesting. Uh, hopefully, Premiere Elements will open the files. Otherwise, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Find an open source editor of some sort. Okay, so... Yeah, it's OSH. Um, there we ha We're going to have a problem. So we either want to go north of the Sigmat or south of the Sigmat. It's probably better uh, looking at the general structure of the route. It's probably better to go south of the Sigmat, because the route's going to bend south anyway. Um, so, bearing that in mind, um, I'm actually going to change the route before Wabash. And looking at my route here... The easiest place I can change it at is Iowa City. And Iowa City's right there. So let's see if the J192 will do what I want. J192, it does avoid the Sigma to the south and gets me to GLD. And where does J192 go after that? It looks like J192 ends. So we'll go J192. So Iowa City 
Then we're going J192. And for anybody that doesn't know, uh, jetways are like highways in the sky. So Internet, Interstate 5, J192. Similar ideas. All right, so I'm going to give myself a rough point of reference here on Sky Vector. And I realize we're going further and further and further away from our ideal great circle right here, but sometimes that happens. It's just the way of the world. Okay. And, I mean, I might add, by the time I get there, the, that convective sigmat may not be there. Uh, there's probably going to be other convective sigmats in the area at that point. Um, but, um, for planning at this stage, that seems like the best thing to do. Okay, so we want to add the Goodland VOR, which we've just done. And we're taking Wabash out. And we're taking Goodland just to the south of Iowa City. Alright, so that shows us roughly, obviously, like I said, Sky Vector doesn't like to add airways that I know about anyway. Um, come on, add Pawnee. Okay, so Pawnee, put that in the right order. And there we go. We've got a good visual indication there. Uh, that we're going to be well clear of that sigmat. And then it has us going north just to go south again, so we're going to have to fix that part of it. So, uh, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to delete everything between my final waypoint, which I already know um, is going to be MVA and uh, Goodland. And then we'll see if there's an airway that conveniently takes us there. And if not, we'll do uh, some direct routing. And then we'll take a look at the ETOPS requirements to make sure, uh, in this case, uh, 777-200LR, uh, have to stay 190 minutes single engine uh, from a suitable airfield that you can land at. And that just makes, well, good sense, really, when you think about it. Okay, so where did my routing go? There we are. Render, render, render. Of course, I zoom in, and it doesn't render. That's just fun. Okay. Um, visually, it's not going to be depicted for you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of this planning in Professional Plate, plate Planner X. Um so as to speed the process up a little bit. There's my magic route line. Okay, so from Goodland, we have the J80, which takes us north, which is not really the direction I want to go. Well, north and then south. We'll see how far the J80 goes. J80 is not real direct. Grand Junction. Actually, J80 is looking kind of promising. Uh, down to Milford, Wilson Creek, um, we could be moving too far south here, Coaldale, okay, so we can do that, uh, we can take J80 to Wilson Creek, that's ILC, so, GLD, J80, 
J80 again, Highway in the Sky. To. Oh, what did I say we were going to? Uh, ILC, which is Wilson Creek, and that's in Nevada. ILC. And then, at that point, we want to still want to go to the start of our standard terminal arrival for San Francisco, which in this case, like I said, Modesto for arrival, and my terminal charts are out of date. I haven't had the money to update them in quite a while. Um, last update was sometime in 2013, so that's how far behind I am. I'll catch up when I can. Uh, but other life priorities... You know how it goes. Uh, so J198, and I'll take that the rest of the way to um, MVA. And from there, the Modesto 4 arrival. Okay, so... <clears throat> Pre-ETOPS consideration. That's going to be the route. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit... Build in uh, Sky Vector, and what it's showing me, uh, obviously you guys can't see it, is the old route uh, as compared to the Great Circle route. Um, we're, like I said, going farther and farther away from the Great Circle route, unfortunately. Um, but that's just the way it works. Um, and there's definitely going to be, as I'm looking at uh, the points here, there's definitely going to be um, a pretty large segment of ETOPS as we're crossing the North Atlantic. Um, but that's about it as far as ETOPS goes. So ETOPS may not actually change this route all that much. So um, at this point, I'm happy with the basic route. So I'm going to hit apply, and we'll switch back to, switch off a of sky vector, and there you can see the route uh, that we have now built, um, and it's still a 3% di distance increase, so it's not that bad. Uh, great circle route is 5,000. 128.6 nautical miles. The flight plan distance is 5,295.1 nautical miles. So uh, that's not too terribly horrible. Um, so it's going to be a Tenerife 4A to Tenerife to Cated to uh, 3230 North, 3440 North, 3650 North, 3860 North, Jabak, or direct Jabak, direct Cuddix. Uh, J79 to JFK, J146 to MIP, J78 to PSB, J60 to JOT, that's Juliet, Illinois, uh, Juliet in Illinois, I don't know how to pronounce it, J146 to Iowa City, J192 to um, GLD, J180 to ILC, J198 to MVA, MVA to uh, the Modesto 4 arrival into San Francisco. Uh, and then expecting runway 28 left. So, um, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the advanced tab now that I have the basic route. Um, and hopefully you're going to be able to see this. Yeah, you can. Um, so I'll go under ETOPS. And it's going to be 180 minute ETOPS. And what's done here is it's suggested adequate airports um, for ETOPS here today. And it's going to give me circles, which again, unfortunately, you can't see, to depict um, basically uh, how far away uh, I'm going to be at any one point from a particular airfield. So, um, it looks like Santa Maria LFPPO uh, would be my first logical choice. Uh, actually, my first logical choice is going to be uh, where I took off from. So, simple. Um, 
I flew into it. Uh, I flew into Gran Canaria for the first time yesterday. It's got nice long runways. Um, and looking at the weather here, uh, winds out of the north at seven knots. A few clouds, 2,500 feet, 23 degrees Celsius, so that's about 74, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Q&H, 1021, uh, no significant weather forecast changes. And from 3 Zulu to 9 Zulu, uh, winds variable at 5. And from 11 Zulu to 13 Zulu, uh, winds 010 at 20 knots. So, um... Nothing to worry about as far as the weather in the in uh, Gran Canaria goes. So Gran Canaria is a perfectly suitable alt- alternate, and uh, that gives me a great circle of 180 minutes, and uh, that actually takes me pretty far into the tops uh, area. And uh, what I'm lo- going to look at here, um, I'm going to see. It takes me almost all the way to 34 degrees north, 40 degrees west, um, is where that 180 minute uh, circle takes me to. Um, my next natural choice would be JFK, um, and I'm going to try putting that in and see what that does um, for the top circle. Um, doesn't quite do the trick. It uh, covers me from just before 3650 north to uh, just before, um, well, covers me from just before 3650 north. Uh, So I still have a gap from 3440 north to 3650 north. Um, And finding a suitable airport for that particular particular point in the trip is going to be a problem. Um, actually, no, it's not. Uh, Santa Maria should cover me. Um, and realizing that that's a little bit redundant, Santa Maria should be able, I should be able to close the gap with Santa Maria. So, um, let's see, we'll make JFK my third ETOPS alternate rather than my second, and LPAZ, I don't know where that is, but we'll try that one and see what it does to the ETOPS map here. Uh, Santa Maria, okay, Santa Maria, Portugal, and that's what we wanted, that does the trick. Um, So now, uh, even though you can't see it, um, I am, for the entirety of the trip, uh, with uh, Gran Canaria as my first alternate, uh, Santa Maria in the Portugal in Portugal off the Azores is my second alternate, and New York's JFK is my third alternate for the Atlantic crossing. So I didn't have to change my route at all uh, for to meet ETOPS requirements. So at no point uh, while I'm crossing the Atlantic will I be more than 180 miles. Uh, or excuse me, 180 minutes uh, away for single engine uh, with depressurization factored in uh, from a from an airport. So uh, I'll kind of try and visually depict this to you, um, realizing that uh, we're get, getting a little long in the tooth with the dispatching, and I'm also uh, rapidly approaching my departure scheduled departure time, so I'm gonna have to redo a lot of this. Um, Unfortunately, weather-wise, I shouldn't have to change the route much, but, um, yeah, it's just the way it goes. Taking a while. So, um, hopefully I'll be able to cut this all together after, after all the videos shot, and, uh, hopefully my hard drive won't be shot as a result. So, JFK is there, and, um... Using JFK as an alternate, uh, I am covered, um, to just before 3650 North. So, let's find 3650 North on Sky Vector. 
assuming it wants to load. Okay, so I'm going to have to zoom in to see the lat longs. Um, I'm zoom in even further. My eyes are awful. And this is on my smaller monitor, so... Uh, so 39.50, what did I say it was, 36.50, plan 36.50. Okay, so bear with me just a moment here. So from From just before this point right here, which is 36 degrees north, 50 degrees west, um, if I have a problem, I'll be closest to New York's Kennedy Airport. Um, I guess, suppose Bermuda would also be an option, but looking at the weather, um, broken clouds, 1,200 feet from 6 Zulu to 1,500 Zulu, uh, vanishing showers from 8 Zulu to 1500 Zulu, uh, with broken clouds at 900 feet, so, eh, that just looks, eh. Um, and the general forecast where winds out of the, oh, southwest at 16 knots, scattered clouds 1200 feet, broken clouds, uh, 30,000 feet, um, and a 40% chance of the the forecast I just mentioned. So, um, you know, I could go, I could go to Bermuda if, if it, that ended up being closer. It's closer, but my official ETOPS alternate, um, is going to be, um, New York. And then, uh, before that, uh, my other alternate, as you can see, Santa Maria Island, and that's going to be my alternate from, uh, going back to Professional Flight Planner X and realizing that you can't see this, um, it's gonna be gonna be my alternate pretty shortly after takeoff. Basically, um, technically with Santa Maria, I, I could take out uh, I could take out uh, Grand Canaria out of the picture entirely and just be covered etops wise with Santa Maria. Um, that is an option. Um, but obviously, if I'm just taking off and I have a problem, I'm going to go back to Grand Canaria. Uh, that just makes sense. So, um, but the ATOPS ent entry will be um, just after uh, 32 degrees north, 30 degrees west. So there's, uh, there's Santa Maria, and I'm assuming somewhere around here is going to be 32 degrees north, 30 degrees west. That's probably it, but I don't know. Uh, 33 degrees north, so. Okay, so 32.30, so I'm actually a ways away from Santa Maria here. Hopefully that'll do what I want to do. Yes, thirty-two thirty. Okay, so at that point, um, just before this point is when I'm going to be more than an hour away from a suitable airfield. Obviously, uh, Las Palmas is right here. Uh, Uh, La Palma Airport is right there. Uh, Tenerife South is right there, and Tenerife North is pretty much right there as well. 
Um, obviously, I don't want to go to Tenerife North. Uh, if you don't know why, uh, search world's wor- uh, world's biggest airplane crash, and you'll kind of find out why. Two forty seven forty sevens fog uh, on the same runway. One was uh, actually they were both back taxing, and uh, one took out took off without permission. The other was trying to find its proper uh, taxiway exit in the fog and got a little confused. So. Um, yeah, don't want to go to Tenerife North. No, thank you. Uh, even in the simulator. Call it stupid, but, uh, yeah. That's kind of where I sit with that. So, um... So, from just before this point, uh, to roughly... Uh... Just after... 3860 north. Uh, I will be more than an hour away uh, from a suitable airfield. So um, that's that. That's what's considered ETOPS airspace, and that's extended twin operating procedure airspace. So um, that's the deal with that. And I'm gonna switch back to Professional Flight Planner X here. And uh, looking at 3650, 3860. So I'm going to go back to Sky Vector so I can completely chart this for you. Just because I'm a nice guy. So uh, 3860 and 3650. So 3860 would be somewhere around there. Thirty eight fifty five. So thirty eight sixty is going to be there we go. Oh no, that's thirty nine sixty. Thirty eight sixty will be there. And we'll add that to the plan. And hopefully Sky Vector will refresh. There we are. And then going beyond that, we have uh, 3650, 3860, then Jabek from that. Jabek Cutex. And we start out with 3230. So let's make sure that's covered here. 3230, 3650, uh, 3440 is the only waypoint I haven't mapped for you there, so we'll do that. And I'm sorry about the dead air. I really, really am. And uh, it's dropping a lot of frames, so I don't know what this is looking like. Uh, Probably not all that great, but maybe not all that horribly either. I don't know. Uh, Well, it's a waypoint again. 3440 north. So, 32, 33, where's 34, 34, 30, there it is. So we got to drag the line up there. And hopefully that won't 
shouldn't be that much of an angle. 3440. Oh, I probably didn't do it right. Yeah, 3430. Oops. 3440 is what we want. So we go another 10 degrees west. And there's 3440, and that just happens to be right on the border of Santa Maria's airspace and New York Oceanic airspace. And, of course, in the real world, they'd be using controller pilot data link and high-frequency radios to give position reports, all that good stuff. Um, unfortunately, it's not the real world, and there's not that level of functionality, and I'm still not at the flying level yet, uh, where I feel comfortable going back on that sim. Um, but I'd be happy to stream that if uh, provided the technical capabilities course. So, uh, what we're looking at here is... I'll zoom out here, and you've got the... I'll zoom out a little bit more. It is long route. Um, and I'll make the notes go away here. So there you go. There is the uh, depiction of the route from Gran Canaria uh, in the uh, Canary Islands uh, heading up northwest um, to New York, basically, and then heading down southwest towards San Francisco. So it's still got that same arc. Um, the Great Circle route, um, well, I can show you the difference, um, here. So that's, uh, the Great Circle route. Again, Great Circle route, according to Sky Vector, 5,133.2 nautical miles, and, uh, ignore that because it's based on a, the ground speed of a Cessna, 110 knots, um, 460 knots, which is probably more realistic for 777. Gives us, uh, hopefully a different number. Yeah, 11 hours, uh, 9 minutes. It says, I don't know if it factors in wind or not. Um, in any case. Uh, that's the Great Circle route, obviously. So, n going up Grand Canaria, uh, just north of, that's Halifax, north Nova Scotia. Uh, going in the vicinity of Toronto, I believe. Toronto is somewhere in there. And then, um, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, North Dakota or South Dakota, depending, and on down from there. So that's, that would be the ideal route if you could do it. Uh, but you generally can't do it. Uh, because of airways, because of North Atlantic tracks, because of wind conditions. Uh, because of SIGMATs, there's all sorts of reasons you can't just do the straight route. So, that's the Great Circle route, and that's... Oh, cool, that worked. So, you can you can see, that's the route I ended up going with. Uh, as you can see, way goes way further south, but it still arcs, goes north to south, and that's considering that the Earth is round, that, that you know, the further north and then south you go, that kind of takes advantage of the curvature of the Earth. Uh, obviously, if you do it more, if you have more of an arc, then you're going to be able to take advantage of the curvature of the Earth a little bit more. Um, so, I mean, in that sense, that would have been better. Great Circle route would have been better to go further north uh, and then south again. But in this case, uh, this is what we're going to end up flying. So, um, that explains the difference between the Great Circle route, again, Great Circle route, and actual flight plan route. Uh, and keep in mind, this doesn't include SIDS and STARS, uh, but it does when we go back to uh, Professional Flight Planner X, which we are now going to do. So that's my route. Uh, we've spent a lot of time calculating that, figuring that out. And um, as far as alternates go, um, uh, destination alternate, first one that makes sense to me is KOAK, and that would be Oakland. And that's just on the other side of the bay. Um, that'll let it find me a route for there. Uh, it's usually not a very uh, logical route. In this case, it has me going 
Oh, actually, that's not bad. Uh, San Francisco VR, Victor 25, Serato, Victor 150 to Sausalito, then direct Oakland. Uh, so that's not bad. 52.2 nautical miles uh, to fly, and expecting runway 29 for that. Okay, it stumped me again. Uh, so I don't know how much you saw and how much you didn't. Um, so at any rate, what's happened now is I've gone through, uh, I filled out all the forms in the, uh, planning side, and now, uh, I have the dispatch release, uh, pending my approval, essentially. Um, and we can see the basic information here, uh, the aircraft, uh, November 7772LR, uh, type 77. Boeing 77 uh, LR, cost index 40, distance, time, 11 hours, 35 minutes, uh, and that's based on the wind projections. Uh, payload, release fuel, uh, 300, 311,000 pounds, 311.1 thousand pounds. Uh, we expect to burn uh, 201,000 pounds, so uh, obviously uh, I'm going to look at that, because uh, I don't want to add too much fuel, because 100,000 pounds of extra fuel is uh, all, an awful lot. Uh, or in this case, it says uh, six, 69 pounds of extra fuel. So I'm going to look at that here in a minute, and we'll figure out what's going on with that. So I'm going to look at the details page here, and look at the fuel breakdown figure. So it says 11 hours and 35 minute flight time, which uh, is going to require 199,753 pounds of fuel. Um, so that's a set figure. I can't mess with that. That's just how much fuel it's going to require. Uh, 10% contingency as required by the Part FAR Part 121 U.S. Flag Operation Rules, 16,487 pounds of fuel. So that's an extra one hour, nine minutes. Uh, the fuel to the alternate, which in this case is Oakland, 4,156 pounds of fuel. So that's 14 minutes of extra flying time. Um, and here's where we can change things. Initial hold, 7,008. So initial hold by default, which is something I set up, um, is 30 minutes. So that gives us already 7,825 pounds. And holding fuel, uh, 15 minutes so we can get rid of, uh, I can hit replan here, go back into my flight plan, go back into fuel, and get rid of the holding time, because we don't need it. Um, and contingency time, I'm going to get rid of that uh, as well, because I don't think we're going to need it. And I'm going to actually change release fuel to minimum, and compute it again, and see what we get. So that was my first attempt at it. Uh, now the weather's changed, so... Uh, Flight time's gotten longer, uh, delay of 12 minutes. Uh, I'll have to check the NOTAMs for why that might be. Um, now the release fuel is 197,170 pounds of fuel, and uh, the fuel we expect to burn is 173 point, 173,634 pounds. So I'll look at the de details there and see if that gives me... Uh, a remaining fuel figure that I'm happy with, it's predicting 23,536. Um, we've got 20 minutes of taxi fuel, that's probably adequate. Uh, minimum takeoff fuel, 13 hours, 42 minutes. Uh, initial hold, 30 minutes. Alternate fuel, 10% contingency. Um... That's a little lower than I would prefer, but you know what? An hour, 40 minutes, we got our contingency fuel that's required, we got our alternate fuel that's required, and we have additional holding fuel, plus the 20 minutes of taxi fuel. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with those, those fuel figures. So uh, when I do leave uh, for the flight, I will take... Uh, I will take on and load on a total of 100, 197,170 pounds of fuel, which should give me enough time to run the engines for 14 hours, 2 minutes. And now we get at the bulk of the flight plan. And 
uh, for a while I was printing this out, but uh, paper doesn't grow on trees, nor does printer ink, so I haven't been printing this out lately. Uh, but you can see United Airlines flight plan IFR United 901. Again, not sure if that's a realistic flight number or not, but I don't care. Uh, registration, uh, the route uh, from the Grand Canaries to San Francisco, all weight in pounds, because uh, I'm from the U.S., so there you go. Uh, scheduled time of departure, 840 Zulu. It is now 851 Zulu, so um, obviously things may change. Um, again, flight number, uh, the aircraft registration and the route uh, says manual because I manually adjusted the route. Um, and departure airport, departure runway, elevation, the departure run uh, airport, cost index, uh, great circle route distance, 5,129 miles, flight plan distance, 5,290 miles, uh, total air distance, uh, and I don't, I don't know how that's calculated, but that's a big number, 5,546 miles. And uh, average headwind component of 22 knots. Um, so that's not bad for going west. Uh, going west, you're always going to have a headwind. Going east, you're always going to, generally, always going to have a tailwind. Uh, initial altitude is going to be flight level 340, and that's perfectly reasonable. Alternate is Oakland, gives the information on Oakland. Uh, and then it gives uh, me the number of passengers, amount of cargo, and total weight. And then it gives me my max zero fuel weight, my max takeoff weight, my last max landing weight, and the plan zero fuel weight, the plan takeoff weight, and the plan landing weight. And obviously I can uh, change that to what the actual numbers would be if they did change. And uh, they're probably not going to change uh, in the simulator, but they could. Um, and so then I have a space to uh, mark that change. Uh, and then it goes over the fuel figures again, which we just uh, went over. Um, release fuel, that means the fuel that I uh, leave the gate with is going to be 197,170 pounds. Uh, and that's good enough, again, to run the engine for engines for 14 hours and 2 minutes. Um, estimated time of departure, obviously that's wrong now. Um, estimated time of arrival, that's obviously wrong now. Um, scheduled time of departure, um, scheduled time of arrival, that's going to be wrong now too. Um, so obviously after I'm recording the video, I may have to adjust this a little bit. And uh, I'll talk about what I changed at some point during the flight, because it's obviously a very long flight. Uh, 11 hours, 47 minutes, as we already mentioned. Um, and then it gives you a spot to uh, enter the on-block and off-block time, takeoff time, landing time, all that good stuff. Uh, ETOPS critical fuel summary, so it gives me my critical points. It tells me when I enter ETOPS airspace, that is when I'm more than an hour away from land, and it's going to be 463 nautical miles before, 34 degrees north, 40 degrees west. Uh, and that'll be an hour and 54 minutes into the flight. And then I'll exit ETOPS airspace. In other words, I'll be less than an hour away from land, 333 nautical miles before Jebok. And it gives me the Latin long at that point. And that'll be five hours and two minutes into the flight. Um, so probably while well, I'm on my rest break, rest break most likely. Because uh, obviously on a flight of this length... Um, Traditionally, what what they would do in the real world uh, for a flight that's essentially 12 hours, I think 12 to 15 hours, I can't remember uh, what the uh, uh, the federal aviation rules are off the top of my head. But um, for a flight of this length, I think it's over 11, 10 or 11 hours, uh, what you would do is you'd divide it into stages, and you would have uh, the main crew, which does the takeoff, and the landing, and um, then you'd have a relief crew which comes up and leaves the main crew. Um, and generally what they do in the real world is uh, they'd split up that 11 hours and, what was it, 11 hours, 47 minutes. Uh, they'd split that up into four equal times. Uh, what I do, because I like to cheat and I like to actually sleep every once in a while, uh, is I'll split that in two and... Uh, combine the 
to two breaks. So, uh, um, in this case, you know, half the flight is going to be roughly six hours. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably f- fly for three hours going into the flight, uh, take six hours or so off, five and a half hours, you know, take a nap, do something else, um, and then come back and, uh, do the last, uh, three or so hours of the flight. So, I mean, it's, in total, it equals the half time that I would have been up there, uh, and it just means if that were a relief crew, they would have to do their half of the flight all straight in a row without a break, which is probably not realistic, but, yeah, you know, I don't care. My, uh, the autopilot doesn't get sleepy, so, um, and there's features of the, uh, 777 from PMDG that make that, uh, a possibility, so, that works. Um, so then this gives me information on, uh, decompression, one engine out, uh, for all my ETOPS points, which is too lengthy to really go through. Uh, this gives me my ATC flight plan, so if I were to file with VATSIM or whatever, it would look like that. Uh, this is my operational flight plan. Um, information on the alternates, which we already went over. Um, and so operational flight plan uh, gives me the uh, en route time that I'm going to cross each waypoint at, uh, how much fuel I should have used by uh, by the time I've crossed that uh, that waypoint and how much fuel I should have bur- uh, should have remaining by the time I cross that waypoint uh, what I'll do is I'll check the fuel every hour uh, while I'm awake obviously uh, make sure there's no fuel leaks make sure that everything's uh, going the way it should and I'll uh, do a demonstration on that uh, and stream that um, at the point in w- at which I do that um and that's basically what I'm going to use to enter the flight plan into the FMC. And as as you can obviously see, it's a very long flight plan. When you write it all all out like that, it can be shorter when you enter it in, but a uh, very long flight plan. Uh, again, 11 hours, 47 minutes in the air. And uh, gives wind information, um, you know, the expected headwinds at various altitudes. Uh, that may change. Uh, obviously, I have to get the updated information. Uh, but that's the end of the flight plan. And the flight plan looks good for me. Looks good to me. So there's another copy of the ATC flight plan. And the weather briefing, uh, which is really what I have t- to look over. Um, and this was as of 8.49 UTC. So that was actually actually 10 minutes ago. So I'm probably good as far as the weather goes. Um so, uh, New York, you have a Sigmat, a Mike 4, and that's valid from uh, the 22nd day, 11 o'clock, to the 23rd day at 3 o'clock Zulu. So that that's already passed. That's not a factor. Um, and let's see, we got Sigmat Mike 4, that's valid again from 2300 Zulu on the 22nd to 3 Zulu on the 23rd, so that's not going to be relevant. Uh, scanning further down here, we have Sigmat Mike 3, and that's valid from, uh, it's all in the past, that's not relevant either. Um, something's crashing or going on on Mr. Computer. I don't know what it is. Um, so, taking a look at it here. Um, so that, those Sigmats based on the times, we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's see, so I'm just going to start scanning for times that would be relevant here. Um, Here's a Sigmat uh, that would be relevant in the Miami FIR. Um, And that looks like uh, some serious weather. Uh, Clouds with tops at 50,000 feet moving southeast at 10 knots. Um, But that's between... 
a thunderstorm is observed. Uh, but I'm not going to be going that far south. Uh, it's between 28, thir- 28 degrees north, 63 degrees n- west, and by then I'll be well north of that, 27, 61, 22, 67, so I'm going to be well north of that, uh, so that's not um, a concern for me. Um, same thing there. Um, all That's all going to be well south of me. Um, and Miami, so Miami's all going to be well south of me. Um, so no significant weather, uh, in the New York FIR. Um, and it gives me the weather for the Canary Islands, um, as of the time this was reported, which was 8 Zulu, so obviously I'll get more updated weather when I actually leave. Uh, wind is out of the north at 11 knots, feet clouds 2,500 feet, 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, so was that about 77 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly speaking? Uh, relatively high pressure, 1021 QNH, no significant weather changes expected. Uh, and uh, there's a 40% chance, uh, between 3 Zulu and 9 Zulu of variable winds of 5 knots, so I'll keep that in mind. Um, and then between 11 Zulu and 13 Zulu, uh, which would maybe the time that I would be diverting, going back to the airport, possibly, uh, if something went wrong, if a passenger got sick, etc. Um... We have winds from the north at 20 knots, so that's all okay. Um, and then destination, um, we're probably looking at uh, 2100 Zulu, give or take. Uh, again, wind 280 at 20, better than 6 miles visibility, few clouds at 1,000 feet in uh, San Francisco. And right now, or as the latest report anyway, at 814 Zulu, uh, wind was out of the southwest at 8 knots, 10 miles visibility, overcast skies at 1,000 feet. Um, so that's going to burn off fog. Obviously, it's uh, 2.03 in the morning, so they're fog in San Francisco right now. Uh, 14 degrees C, so a little chilly in the 50s. Um, but by the time we get there, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it should be a pretty nice day. Uh, I would think high 60s. Um, and obviously few clouds at a thousand feet based on this forecast. Uh, and if I'm a little bit later, uh, well, then the wind's uh, going to be much more interesting. Uh, still have a few clouds at a thousand feet, but uh, the wind's going to be a little bit of a crosswind from the two eights um, and a little bit of gust as well. Uh, better than six miles visibility, though. So possibility of wind gusts if I'm a couple hours later than I want to be. Um, and JFK... Um, that's seven to eight hours into the flight. Um, so we're probably looking at this range into, uh, well, probably 1600 Zulu. That's reasonable. So 170 at 10, few cloud 6000, no big deal. Um, alternate Oakland. Uh, 2100 Zulu again, looking at that, uh, 280 at 17, few clouds 1500 feet, so not all that different from San Francisco, as you would expect. Um, so no big concerns there. Sacramento, um, general forecast, uh, winds 160 at 9, and clear skies, visibility better than 6 miles. And, um, looking at San Jose, lastly, uh, winds from the northwest, 9 knots, better than 6 miles visibility, and few clouds at 18,000 feet. So, as always, um, San Jose has the best weather (laughs) in the Bay Area. Uh, right now, clear skies, 13 degrees, um, so actually... Not not the best weather today in terms of temperature, but in terms of clear skies, it's um, doing better. So anyway, 
Uh, then the last ETOPS alternate is Santa Maria, and that's about four to five hours into the flight. Um, so, um, looks like winds from the northeast at eight knots, a few clouds at 1,800 feet, broken clouds at 3,000 feet. Um, so not ideal, but uh, not horrible either. Temperature there currently 19 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's my look at my dispatch release. Um, there's no TAMs, uh, which I may or may not look at because uh, it's flight sim, and technically I don't have to do that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hit release flight. And uh, there it's giving me my... Uh, flight plan, and it notes a delay of 12 minutes, and that's probably due to a NOTAM that I didn't look at, but it's flight sim, so who cares? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this flight plan, uh, but I'm not going to physically print it, because paper and ink, um, but I'm going to print it to Microsoft Document Writer. And uh, give it a name here, uh, and you can't see it. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export that flight plan, um, and I'm going to go ahead and collect all this information. And the next portion of the video that I shall show you uh, will be the uh, uh, flight preparation. Once I have the dispatch sheet, once I've got my weather. Uh, basically when I'm ready to start the procedures with the uh, Boeing PMDG 777-200LR for the uh, essentially 12-hour flight to uh, San Francisco. So uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to email me a comment, again, nicnacjak at gmail.com. That's November, Indio Charlie, November, Alpha Charlie, Juliet, Alpha Kilo at gmail.com. And like I said, I'll be back uh, in a while. And I'll give you some more stuff. Bye for now. Creative Commons.